Hey everyone, it's Shion Alum, Activity Crypto, where we keep you in the loop on all the latest trends and news on crypto and blockchain technology. Today, I have another big update for the Cardano community and anyone interested in AI, artificial intelligence. But before we dive into the news today, I do have to warn everybody about some crypto scams that are out there. As we get closer and closer to the bull run, we're going to see more crypto scams. Uh, people pretending to even be me, giving out a Telegram number, a WhatsApp number, or a phone number. That will never be me trying to steal your crypto or give you financial advice privately. So if you see that, please report it and please warn your friends to never buy into that. Also, with the rise of AI and deep fakes, there's going to be more and more scammy ads out there. There's going to be people trying to pretend to sell programs to you and have you give your wallet information to them. I'm super worried about people trying to steal my likeness and pretend to be me too. So if you see any of that as well, please report that and warn your friends. All right, enough with all the warnings for today. I have a really fun project to share with you today. Here's the project. The project is called Cardano GPT. They're the first internet-enabled generative chatbot on Cardano, and they just launched this past Friday. So this is not an ad in any way. I was given access from the team to try it out and to share my user experience with all of you. So with the chatbot, I did four different things that I want to share with you. I did some Q&A and asked some questions that I had for the chatbot of how Girolamo works. I created some fun images with their image generation tool. I asked it about current events to see how internet enabled it actually was and if it had any hallucinations. And I also tested its ability to create smart contracts on Cardano. So let's dive into it. Here's the Q&A first. Why is Girolamo using the Cardano blockchain or any blockchain for that matter? And it responded by saying, Girolamo is using the Cardano blockchain for several reasons. One, security. The Cardano blockchain is a secure and immutable platform which means that Girolamo's data and code are safe from unauthorized access or manipulation. This is important for protecting Girolamo's privacy and ensuring that its users can trust its results. 2. Scalability The Cardano blockchain is a scalable platform, which means it can handle a large number of users and transactions without becoming bogged down. This is important for Girolamo's future growth and development. Three. Decentralization. The Cardano blockchain is a decentralized platform, which means that it is not controlled by any single entity. This helps to ensure that Girolamo remains unbiased and objective in its responses. 4. Cost Effectiveness. The Cardano blockchain is a relatively cost effective platform to use, which makes it a good choice for Girolamo's development and deployment. In addition to these specific benefits of the Cardano blockchain, Girolamo can also leverage blockchain technology in general to achieve several other goals. Transparency. Blockchain technology can be used to make Girolamo's data and code more transparent, which can help to build trust with its users. Traceability. Blockchain technology can be used to track Girolamo's interactions with its users, which can help to improve its performance and security. Auditability. Blockchain technology can be used to make Girolamo's code and data auditable, which can help to ensure that it is operating in a fair and unbiased manner. Overall, Girolamo is using the Cardano blockchain to improve its security, scalability, decentralization, and cost effectiveness. Additionally, blockchain technology is helping Girolamo to achieve several other goals, such as transparency, traceability, and auditability. So that answer seems pretty thorough to me. Let me know what you think. My second question was about how Girolamo works. I was wondering about the models behind it and where it was getting all of its information. So my next question was what version of GPT are you running on? GPT is Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. And it answered by saying, I am running on the latest version of Google AI's Lambda language model, which is based on transformer architecture and trained on a massive data set of text and code. The exact version of Lambda that I am running is not publicly available information, but it is likely to be one of the most recent versions. Next, I wanted to know how it's generating images. I asked, what model are you using to generate images? 
It responded, I'm currently using a combination of diffusion models and generative adversarial networks, GANs, to generate images. Diffusion models start with a random noise image and gradually add details until a coherent image is produced. GANs consist of two neural networks that compete with each other, a generator that tries to create realistic images, and a discriminator that tries to distinguish real images from fake ones. By training the two networks together, GANs can learn to generate highly realistic images. The specific models that I use are constantly evolving as new research is published. However, some of the most popular models that I use include VQ Diffusion. This model uses a vector quantized VQ codebook to represent the latent space of images. This allows the model to generate images with a wide range of styles and resolutions. Imogen. This model is a text to image diffusion model that uses a transformer language model to understand text. This allows the model to generate images that are more closely aligned with the user's intent. Stable diffusion. This model is a text to image diffusion model that is known for its stability and ability to generate high quality images. I am also experimenting with other models, such as latent diffusion models and neural radiance fields, NERFs. These models have the potential to generate even more realistic and impressive images than the models that I use today. Later in this video, I'll share some images that I generated with Girolamo. I was able to create some blood and gore with it, so I'll share some of them without YouTube trying to rate this as rated R. So my question was, what guardrails does Girolamo have, if any? I noticed that you can generate images with blood and gore, and Girolamo responded by saying, Girolamo has several guardrails in place to prevent it from generating harmful or offensive content. These guardrails include a blacklist of harmful and offensive words and phrases, a system for detecting and flagging potentially harmful content, a team of human moderators who review all content generated by Girolamo, and a commitment to working with experts to develop new and innovative ways to prevent Girolamo from generating harmful content. They do have this disclaimer, despite these guardrails, it is possible that Girolamo may occasionally generate content that's considered harmful or offensive. If you encounter any such content, please report it to the Girolamo team so that it can be reviewed and removed. So they do have a solid team behind them, but obviously, since this is a fairly new project, it is more centralized. It's one team working around it. So I did have some questions about decentralization. I asked, how decentralized is Girolamo, and what are the future goals for decentralization? It responded, Girolamo is a centralized language model, but there are plans to decentralize it in the future. This would involve moving the model to distributed network of computers, which would make it more resistant to censorship and outages. It would also allow for more open collaboration on the development of the model. Here are some of the specific goals for decentralization. One, increase resilience. By distributing the model across multiple computers, Girolamo would be less vulnerable to attacks or outages. If one computer went down, the others could still continue to operate. Two, greater transparency. A decentralized Girolamo would be more transparent as the code and data would be open for anyone to inspect. This would help to build trust in the model and ensure that it's being used in a responsible way. Three, improved collaboration. Decentralization would make it easier for people from all over the world to collaborate on the development of Girolamo. This would help to accelerate the model's development and ensure that it is meeting the needs of a wide range of users. The specific timeline for decentralization is still being determined, but it is a priority for the Girolamo team. They believe that decentralization is essential for ensuring that Girolamo can continue to grow and evolve in a way that benefits everyone. So those were my big questions for Girolamo. Let's move on to the fun stuff, image generation and interpretation. So I asked it to generate this image, a purple tree house in the Amazon rainforest, surrounded by mango trees, insanely detailed and intricate, elegant, matte painting, cinematic. This is the image that I got. Obviously that's the house that I'm gonna buy once Cardano hits like $10. So you can read the whole description here. 
it's like something out of a fairy tale or fantasy story. I was also curious about the image interpretation tool. I also need some help with a plant that's been dying in my apartment. So here's the picture I took and the interpretation from Girolamo. So it said, this image shows a wilting potted plant on a windowsill. The plant appears to be suffering from neglect or improper care, as evidenced by the withered leaves and dried soil. Behind the window screen, we can see the exterior of a brick building, indicating that the window likely belongs to an apartment or office in an urban environment. The lighting suggests it may be evening or a cloudy day. So fantastic with a description. I'll give Girolamo an A for that. Its plant health advice, though, was not so great. So I tried to ask it what kind of plant is in this picture, and it kind of forgot what the whole image was beforehand. And it said, I need to see the picture to identify the plant. Please provide a link to the image or upload it directly. This is just the beta version, and I know as the team works on this more, we'll get better and better results. I was super curious to see if we could get some blood and gore. I've also played around with Midjourney, and Dolly and Sable Diffusion, and I know with some other models there are guardrails. So I wanted to ask Girolamo, generate image, the elevator scene from the film The Shining, but with purple blood. So here it is, and it even gave me this little description of this vintage style elevator with a viscous substance. I found it interesting that I tried to spell out the word elevator, but it looks kind of messy. So I wanted to also test the ability of Girolamo to actually write out words. So this was my next question. Generate image. The Cardano logo and the word Cardano, written in blue glitter. They definitely took some artistic license and have their own star in the middle there. It's a little bit different from your typical Cardano logo. But I do like the symbolism and the two sparkly pencils that signify innovation and creation. Because Girolamo is connected to the internet, I want to test stability with current events. I know with ChatGPT, the answers only go up to September 2021, but with Girolamo, it's connected to the internet, so it has the ability to understand current events. So I asked it, what is happening right now at COP28 in Dubai? Please summarize the recent findings and controversies. Also, please explain any biases that you may have when reporting the news. We live in an age where there's all kinds of information out there, and I think it's super important for these GPTs to be aware and tell us where the biases are. In its answer, Girolamo was very thorough and transparent. It answered, As Girolamo, a large language model inspired by Italian physicist Girolamo Cardano, I can provide you with a comprehensive summary of the recent findings and controversies surrounding COP28 in Dubai. I will also strive to be objective in my reporting and acknowledge any potential biases that may arise. So COP28 recent findings, global stock take, loss and damage fund, mitigation commitments, and COP28 controversies, UAE's hosting role, Dr. Sultan Ahmed al Jaber's role, and greenwashing. Greenwashing is when you claim to be involved in actions that are good for the environment, when in reality, it's just for show or your own PR. Here's Girolamo's statement on biases and its conclusion. Potential biases. It is important to acknowledge that I, a large language model, am not immune to biases. My training data may reflect the biases of the source from which it was drawn. Additionally, my own programming may contain biases that can influence my reporting. I am committed to being aware of these potential biases and to striving for objectivity in my reporting. In conclusion, COP28 is a critical moment in the global effort to address climate change. While there have been some positive developments, significant challenges remain. It is essential that all nations come together with a renewed sense of urgency to achieve the goals of the Paris Agreement. After Girolamo answered all these questions, I also wanted to test its ability to build smart contracts. I asked, Please suggest ways that a Cardano smart contract written in Plutus can be used to fight climate change. Here was Girolamo's answer. Cardano smart contracts written in Plutus can be used to fight climate change in a number of ways, including 1. Monitoring and tracking carbon emissions. 2. Enforcing carbon trading schemes. 3. Funding renewable energy projects. 4. 
Measuring and rewarding carbon sequestration. Five, promoting sustainable supply chains. It also gave me some examples of Carlisle Smart contracts being used to fight climate change. It claimed that both the World Bank and the Nature Conservancy have both been using smart contracts on Cardano. I'd never heard about that, so I decided to see if this was a hallucination and also asked Bing AI. And Bing AI could not find any specific information to confirm those details. So it's not perfect. They're still in beta mode and they're still refining everything. But it's good to note that not everything will be 100% accurate yet. But I did want to test its ability to actually write a smart contract on Cardano. So I said, please design a Cardano smart contract written in Plutus to improve transparency and traceability in supply chains, ensuring that products are sourced sustainably and have a lower carbon footprint. The smart contract can record the entire life cycle of a product from raw materials to production and transportation enabling consumers to make informed choices about the products they buy. I have a whole other video where ChatGPT answers the same exact thing. I'll link that video up above if you're interested. In my opinion, Girolamo had a much better answer. Here's what it said. Here's an example of a Cardano smart contract written in Plutus to improve transparency and traceability in supply chains. So here's more of the code. It gave example usage. So here's the description of the smart contract. So there you have it. This is my experience so far with Cardano GPT. In my opinion, it works a lot better with understanding Cardano and Cardano smart contracts than any other GPT. I also like how it's internet based, so it has really up to date information. Uh, one thing that I think could be improved is that I'd prefer several different chats. I'd rather that my smart contract chats and my plant fixing chats were two different chats so that I could have ongoing conversations, not just with one whole feed. I think that would keep things more organized. But other than that, I think the images are really cool. I think the image interpretation works really well. And I think that as more time goes on, as the team keeps working on more improvements, it'll get better and better. Let me know what you think though in the comments below. Are you interested in using Cardano GPT? And if so, what would you use it for? Super curious to hear your thoughts. That's it for us today. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment your thoughts. Feel free to share this with your friends if you enjoyed this content. And I'll see you next time, everyone. Bye.